Hello, everyone. Welcome to GNAI Talk in 10, brought to you by SSNC Blue Prism. So, Satish, let's talk about use cases. And this is this is typically a bit of a quandary with any new technology. Companies want to use it. They want to dive in head first, but they they tend to get hung up on what's the right use case to start with. And, you know, analysis paralysis kind of sets in because they 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 can't get out of their own way and they get hung up on just finding the perfect use case. So I'd like to just pick your brain here and let you talk about what you see as some of the most uh, common use cases for companies that are beginning to use Gen AI uh, at scale. And then we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, so Brad, thank you very much. This is one of my favorite topics given it's our customers' favorite topics. I, I was just thinking as you were describing this, um, I was just thinking about how customers are looking at this, right? The, the complexity and impact, if, you, if you're kind of plotted, mm -hmm. right? If something is simple to implement and the impact is high, that's, that's the, the, the uh, ideal scenario, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we see people thinking along those lines, the, those two kind of uh, ways to look at things. If there's a four by four, right, um, access, right? Mm -hmm. You have complexity and you have impact to the business. So just thought I'll mention that. But before we dive into use cases, I think it will be useful to have a set of categories we have come up with, right? Based on what kind of outcomes you can drive with use cases. Mm -hmm. You also always start with the end in mind, right? What outcomes right. and then work your way backwards and say, what technology do I need? Because in the end, it's about the outcomes. Mm -hmm. There are five categories we usually look at, right? So number one is simplification. What can I do with Gen AI and Blue Prism to simplify things? You know, something like summarizing meeting notes and documents. Great use case. We see it often, right? In customer service and the like. So I'll talk about, you know, the broad areas later, but customer service is one of them. The second category is classification, right? This is where you take a document, let's say, you look at customer sentiment, you look at the kind of topic they're talking about. We had a insurance client who had four different uh, business units and they wanted us to look at emails and look at the topic, the subject line and direct that email into the right business, right? Mm -hmm. So sim seems simple, but how do you look at an unstructured document and then route it to the right place, you know, accurately, you know, at least 99% of the time. The third category is generation. This is an obvious one, right? Given it's generative AI. So it's about generating text, image, audio, video, data visualization, all kinds of things, right? Fourth category, verification. This is where you want to compare data, right? So let's say you get a response, you're, you're looking for an insight from within a document using Gen AI, great. Now, before I send it to a customer, what I found, right? I want to confirm the veracity of the data by comparing it to maybe another source so that I know what I'm sending, I have high confidence in. Right, mm -hmm. so that's verification, and then last one is analysis, identifying trends and providing recommendations. Now you might be wondering, why did I tell you all these categories? Right, the simplification, classification, generation, verification, and analysis. The reason I brought this up is because now you can say, okay, when my business can I simplify? Right. So if I'm a fin finance. Cause you know, I'm a financial advisor kind of business, then maybe I can help simplify the documents for the financial advisor. You know, maybe I can improve customer experience. I can make the financial advisor's life better, but more importantly, I can help that customer mm -hmm. uh, with a faster response time because the advisor is not spending days looking through documents. They're getting answers in seconds and minutes, right? So that's a great example of how to apply these categories and say, is there a place in my business where I can actually use Gen AI and, and Blue Prism together? 
given this was, this was a question about use cases, let me give the three broad areas we see, right? We are seeing from a use case standpoint. First is customer experience. You know, you have probably heard the term co-pilot. It's nothing but an assistant. It's a fancy name for an assistant, a digital assistant. Something digital workers have done for a long time, frankly. It's nothing new to us. AI is a new skill for the digital worker. That's about it. But we have been digital assistants to human workers for the longest time. So injecting AI just makes that digital worker even smarter, even more useful, higher ROI, right? Back to the uh, business. So customer experience is number one. Knowledge management, leveraging the vast repository of information, untapped information that's sitting within an enterprise, right? Because if enterprises were to use all the knowledge they had about the client, they could really do even better than they were, right? Because part of the challenge is they're not know using everything they have in the customer because it's hard to get to. And the return on investment is not there for that extra effort, right? Until now. With Gen AI, we have been able to get to unstructured documents faster, better, cheaper, and thereby extract insights much quicker and use the knowledge we have. So that's the second category. Third category in terms of use cases is uh, software development. This is where code generation, code, code com autocomplete, code testing is a big, big area, right? Where we, we this, these are kind of the three broad use cases. So again, the five categories we talked about, and then we talked about the three broad use cases, namely customer experience, knowledge management, and software development, testing, et cetera. And I like how you put it, Satish, that there is no standard use case that applies to everybody. It, it's, it's really a matter of looking at the outcomes that you are targeting, and then how can these capabilities or categories, as you call them, how can they be leveraged in the most effective way to, to deliver those outcomes? And once you start connecting the dots, that's a pretty powerful mix, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now, understanding how Gen AI can help you tackle and consume massive amounts of, of information that, you know, those are the kind of things in a variety of processes that tend to consume a lot of time and effort and create errors and create and require a ton of manual effort. Yeah, Gen AI can play a role in, in so many different ways. I mean, it's it's not just one size fits all or here's a list of the five things that every company should do. It's really going to depend on the way the company operates today and where they can get the most benefit. And that's where really it should be applied. Absolutely. I was just going to give a quick example. Like we, was, we were speaking to a manufacturing client and they wanted to see an equity research use case. Mm -hmm. so somebody kind of observing what's happening might think, why would I show an equ equity research use case to a manufacturing client? Well, they wanted to do supplier research. Mm -hmm. They have to deal with dozens of suppliers. They want to look at the health of the financial health of the supplier. They want to look at the kind of products they have but they want to do it using Gen AI and Blue Prism. Perfect example, you know, you, you, you look at it as a category, right? And then you know, oh, you can apply it in a different way. Right, so. Yeah, now those, those examples, you're right, they, they quickly translate into a use case that is specific to an organization. Once they understand how it functions and how it's unique, then it, it it becomes very clear how they could put it into practice within their own organization. So, um, yeah, the use case dilemma is out there and it really shouldn't hold people back. They shouldn't be looking for that perfect use case. They really should be thinking in terms of how Gen AI can extend what they're already doing with, with automation and with AI. And once they figure that out, the, the possibilities are endless. Exciting topic for sure, and one that's uh, of heavy interest uh, to many, many people out there. So, Satish, thank you for sharing your thoughts, and we'll yes. see all of you next time on Gen AI Talk in 10.